let's talk fabric, shall we? So today's video is a special request from one of my viewers who was asking me about fabric and pattern pairings. So if that is something that you might be interested in, then please keep on watching. Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. So I got a special request from a viewer to talk to you guys about fabric and pattern pairings. You may have noticed that I'm wearing my Hackathon make and that is because in all full and frank disclosure, your girl has recorded two videos back to back. Listen, the life of a content creator means being smart sometimes and today is just one of those days. So in terms of fabric and pattern pairings, I have gotten a lot of, I want to say commendations, but I also want to be very humble about it um, regarding my fabric and pattern pairings. And so I feel like at this point, it is a little bit of my sewing superpower. And I wanted to share with you guys just a little bit of the thought process that I go through when I'm trying to choose a fabric for a pattern or a pattern for a fabric. Now, what do I mean? No, it's almost like which comes first, the egg or the chicken. Sometimes I choose a pattern and then I go on the hunt for the perfect fabric for said pattern. Other times, you guys, like, I feel like a burning need to use a particular fabric and then I try to pair the perfect pattern for said fabric. Do I always get it right? Absolutely not. Sometimes, you guys, I still make a hubbubaloo mess of my fabric and pattern pairings. But I have come, I feel like, a very long way in the process from when I first started sewing to now. And so I feel like I could share some valuable information with you guys. Now, my first tip is to check with your pattern company about the suggested fabrics for your particular pattern. Now, if you're working with the big five, if you turn your pattern envelope to the back where they have sizing information, they also give you recommended fabrics for your project. Now, I feel like this is a good starting base for picking your fabrics. I feel like it's very hard to go wrong once you follow like the fabric recommendations. Now, obviously the pattern designer has in mind the um, silhouette of the pattern and the drape and fit and so on that they envision for the said pattern. And so when they give fabric recommendations, then I feel like they have given great thought to what fabrics will pair nicely with what patterns. Now, from my own observations, I do feel, however, that the um, fabric recommendations at the back of the pattern um, usually reflect the season that the pattern has come out in, at least so far as the big five is concerned. I feel like for the summer patterns and the spring patterns, the um, recommended fabrics are sort of restricted to like summer weight fabrics for the most part. And the same thing with fall and winter patterns. Does it mean that fall and winter fabrics can't work with your summer patterns? Absolutely not. But as I said, a good starting point will be to consult your um, fabric recommendations from your pattern designer. Now for the indie patterns, you can also find fabric recommendations usually in the instructions. The indie pattern designers do have a paragraph or so just outlining some of the recommended fabrics for said project. So if you are new to sewing or you are new to like fabric, then check your fabric recommendations first. Now over the years, I have discovered that once you get a good understanding of your fabric types, then it's easier for you guys to sort of stray away from those pattern recommendations. So when I first started sewing, I was not very familiar with fabrics at all. I bought a lot of quilting cottons, which I have later discovered do not make for great um, apparel pieces, at least not for adults. I find like when I have used them to make like children's dresses, they have worked fairly well. They hold the gathers and the shapes quite nicely. But I don't think I have had as much success with like adult patterns. And that has taken me some time and a lot of mess ups, to be frank, a lot of mess ups. I have learned a lot from messing up a lot of fabric, wasting lots of fabric. Do I recommend it? Mm, not necessarily. I feel like we should try to minimize waste as much as possible. 
However, some of the best lessons I learned when we make mistakes. Ask me how I know. And I mean that both like in sewing and just in life generally. I feel like my greatest lessons and most of my growth has come from screwing up. Like point blank, just screwing up. So if you are a beginner sewist or even if you have been sewing for a while, allow yourself room to mess up and then give yourself some grace when you actually do. And you will find that by picking the wrong fabrics for your patterns, you also learn how to pick the right fabrics for your patterns. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. I'm hoping that it does. But you know what not to pick. And by ruling out what not to pick, then you have a better idea of what you can pick. Now, if you happen to live somewhere where you have like local fabric stores, I would absolutely recommend that you go to said stores and just like pet your fabric. Like feel different fabrics and start to become acquainted with different fabric types. Now, earlier on in my sewing journey, I had started to compile swatches of fabrics. So when I got a fabric, I would cut out a little swatch, stick it to this um, card, and try to write some details about the fabric, the source of my fabric, and what the fabric was. And that sort of helped me to get more familiar with the different like substrates for fabric. Your rayons, your viscoses, your twills, your denims, your suitings, they all feel and respond differently to touch and to use. And so the more familiar I became with the different fabric substrates, the easier it has been for me to pair like patterns and fabric. So if I pick up like a pattern envelope that has like a loose sort of boxy top, for example, let's think about McCall's 8001. That's a good one. It's a sort of oversized flowy button down shirt pattern. Now, when I think of a pattern like this, I do want to use something that has some drape. Because it has its oversized and boxy shape, and because of my own body shape, I would prefer to use a fabric that has some drape so that the fabric sort of collapses on my body instead of sort of stands out from my body. Now, if that is the look that you're going for, then absolutely you can pick a fabric that has very little drape and will give you that sort of boxy structure but for what i like personally i would prefer to use something with more drape so if i were to make that pattern i would probably draw for like a rayon or maybe even like a viscose or maybe even one of those light to midweight viscose twills or maybe that linen viscose that minerva just came out with those are the sort of fabrics that sort of come to mind when i think about that pattern could i probably use something with more structure absolutely but then for my own like personal aesthetic, I think I would prefer something with some drape. So again, once you start working with fabrics, becoming more familiar with the different fabric types, then it is sort of easier to pair your um, fabric and patterns without even um, looking at the recommended fabrics. Now, another thing that I like to bear in mind when I'm pairing my fabrics and my patterns are colors. Now, I have had my colors professionally done I know for some people that's not your thing, that's totally fine, but if you do want to get your colors professionally done, if that's something that you are consider exploring, then I would implore you to check out Your Color Guru. I do have an ambassadorship with Your Color Guru, and therefore I can offer you a 10% discount on any Your Color Guru color consultation. I'll put my code on the screen and down below in the description box. So if that is something that you might be interested in, then you can go ahead and check that out. Now I feel like for some patterns, it looks different based on the color scheme or print that you pick. I think that as well as looking different based on your fabric type, I feel like your colors and your prints also play a big part in the final product. Like I feel like something can look so different if you make it in a solid as opposed to making it in a print. Now I myself, I'm a print girl, so most of my fabrics and most of my wardrobe both print. But there have been occasions where I have made or I have seen things made up in solid um, fabrics and I feel like, ooh, I like how that looks in solid as compared to in a print. It's not very usual, but it does happen from time to time. Now, in terms of my fabrics, I only basically buy fabrics now that are already in my color scheme. And so I have sort of like ruled that aspect out in terms of picking my fabrics. But then I have to contend with which prints do I think will do this justice. 
Now, if I have something that has a very large scale print, then I want to avoid patterns that have lots of seam lines and style lines, just so I can avoid breaking up my print too much. Now, prints that have like small ditzy patterns, like picture, a Liberty Ditsy Print Floral. Those fabrics are great for patterns that have lots of seam lines because the print is so small, you don't have to worry about one, pattern matching, and two, creating a final product that sort of is visually askew. Like it makes your eyes jump around just because you have broken up the print so much. So again, if you have something with a big print, I will use minimal style lines. Think like shift dresses. Shift dresses tend to have very little style lines. You may or may not have like a bust that, your shoulder seam, your side seam, maybe a center back seam and that's it. And so if you have like a big floral print fabric or you have like a big abstract fabric or you have one of those, um, what do you call them? Those abstract sort of painting fabrics, you know, like when they sort of reduce like a picture um, onto your fabric, like those sort of fabrics are best used for patterns that have minimal style lines. Again, smaller prints are best for patterns that have like lots going on. And if you're like me, then sometimes I take the time to pattern match. If I'm working with a large scale print, if I have enough fabric, then I will take the extra effort to pattern match. I still don't always get it right, but I do make an effort. When I'm working with smaller print fabrics or fabrics that have like sort of like abstract um, prints, I really don't pay much attention to pattern matching. So for example, when I was working with this fabric, because of the very nature of the fabric, it didn't really require me to do any pattern matching at all. And so it was easy for me to sort of incorporate all of the different style lines into this dress using this fabric. Now, those are the major considerations that I bear in mind when I'm trying to pair my fabric to pattern pairings. If you guys have any other things that you bear in mind when you're trying to pick the perfect fabric for a pattern or vice versa, then go ahead and drop me some comments down in the comments box. They not only will help me, but they will also help other viewers to try and nail their fabric and pattern pairings. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you have gotten this far in my video and you're not yet a subscriber, then please consider subscribing. Subscriptions cost you guys absolutely nothing, but they do guarantee you a spot right here with me in my YouTube sewing family. And I really appreciate having you guys here in my space. Now that is all I needed to share with you guys today. I'm really hoping that this video is helpful to at least one person. If it's helpful to at least one person, then I would have fulfilled my purpose. So thank you guys so much for taking time to watch. And until next time, stay calm, stay cool, stay safe, and absolutely keep sewing. Peace.